Cool. So um, thanks very much uh, for having me. Uh, as I've introduced myself already, my name is Paul Kennedy. I'm uh, my official title is Community and Communication Manager at Zindi, but we're a very small startup, which means I do a lot of different things. Um, in this context, I took the lead on an experimental mentorship program that we ran in August last year. Um, I'd like to take a little bit of time to introduce Zindi, but first off, I should just put in a proviso that, um, as I said, this was a very experimental program. I'm by no means an expert in mentorship. I have very little experience in running mentorship programs. Uh, in fact, I have exactly one mentorship program under my belt. We are setting up to run another one. Um, so I'm just going to present what lessons we learned uh, from a, I guess, a fairly naive point of view. I'd love to hear feedback and uh, find out how we could do things better. That's kind of why I'm here. And I think a big overarching question for us at the moment is how we can kind of automate and remove the, the human component and, and push our mentorship program in the direction of a platform for mentorship rather than um, sort of manually managing things. Um, let me go to the next slide. There we go. Okay, so just a little bit about Zindi. Um, Zindi is a social enterprise. We are for profit uh, and we can be characterized as a data science platform and community. Uh, when we started out, we were very much focused on machine learning competitions. So we got data sets from real world, world organizations and packaged those data sets in the form of a competition where uh, users could submit um, their, their score, their results, uh, having built machine learning models, trying to solve a specific problem. Um, we've now expanded a little bit to do some other things. Um, at the moment, we have uh, just gone past 25,000 users. Um, something like 80% of those are African. Most of those are young people with very little professional experience in data science. So. Uh, more along the lines of a data science enthusiast than a data science professional. Um, as I said, we started as a, a competition platform, but we're really focusing very hard on becoming more of a learning platform. And we also have a recruitment uh, section to our, to our page. So um, finding ways to get value out of a, out of a community of data scientists. Um, so the learning platform as it stands, we basically have a collection of tutorials, um, but in the next year or so, we're planning on expanding it to really make Zindi the place for data scientists to come and learn in Africa. Um, and the mentorship program that we ran last year was essentially uh, one of the experiments towards a, a more comprehensive learning platform. So um, talking a little bit in more detail, uh, as I said, very much an experiment. We put out a call and got uh, more than 250 applications from our user base. Um, and as part of that call, we tried to make it as, um, we tried to ask for as much information as possible. As I said, we tried to be a data-driven organization. And so we, we asked them, asked uh, people applying what they wanted uh, we asked about their experience, what they, what languages they were comfortable in, both spoken languages and uh, programming languages. Um, and from those 250 applications, we cut that down to 18 mentors, uh, 18 mentees, excuse me, which we referred to as junior data scientists. Um, and we chose six mentors, also chosen from the Zindi platform. And we tried to choose people we knew were active in the community. We saw them on the discussion forums, people who contribute tutorials, people who are ranked highly on the Zindi leaderboard because there's an overall Zindi leaderboard. Um, and we, 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 in fact, offered uh, mentorship positions to these people. And, and then they applied and we chose the six that we thought would be most appropriate. Uh, it, we ran an eight-week pro, eight program. As I mentioned before, it was um, mostly self-learning driven. Um, I'll talk about how we sorted out and connected our mentors and mentees now, but um, we basically designed a, a loose curriculum or a learning path template, as Sharon referred to it as, um, where each week there was a different focus. 
Um, we tried to include soft skills as well as hard skills. So we ran webinars on good coding practice, um, how to design a CV. We gave our mentees a task to present their work in some shape or form at the end of the program. So we tried to focus on a, a broader skill set than just technical skills. And in fact, we didn't, we didn't, um, there wasn't enough, we didn't give enough time in terms of the interactions between mentors and mentees to really teach technical skills. They had about an hour a week with their mentors um, and that's not really enough time. So it was really, that time was about feedback, providing resources that, so they could go away and learn on their own and providing more, more high level guidance. Um, we also paired the mentorship program with three competitions on Zindi. So Zindi has a wide range of competitions. Some are for prizes, but many are for knowledge um, and they're designed as learning competitions. So we paired the mentorship with a competition uh, with three competitions over the course of the program. Um, so that meant there was something practical for mentees to work towards each week. So, and, and we increased the complexity of the challenges. So they started with a very simple challenge that was really an introduction to machine learning. And um, the, the two following challenges became more complicated. Um, Okay, so in terms of pairing our junior data scientists with uh, their mentors, as I said, we did collect a lot of data, uh, both both from our mentors and our mentees. So we, we tried to know as much as we could about these individuals. Um, and once we had chosen uh, our, our 18 junior data scientists from the from all of the applications, we tried to, we essentially created groups. Each, each of the six mentors had three mentees each, um, and they were grouped based on language, both again, um, spoken language and programming language. So generally speaking, we had, if I recall correctly, we had one primarily French speaking mentorship group and the rest were all English. And likewise, we had prim one primarily R programming language group and the rest all Python because on Zindi, those are the two um, predominant languages that get used, Python and R. Um, we also tried to make groups based on, uh, we tried to make our groups diverse. We didn't want all women in one group and all men in other groups. We tried to spread it around because Zindi is very much a, a, an African community. We didn't want three people from South Africa or three people from Senegal in one group. So we tried to distribute where people came from. And we did also try to select people from as many countries as possible. Uh, what is next on this? Right. Um, I wanted to add something here and now I'm trying to remember what it is. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we the, the decision to make a mentorship group was really because of this focus on self-learning. Uh, the idea was that um, the mentor, the mentees, while they didn't have access to a mentor, would be able to work together in groups to learn. We um, There's a wonderful quote from a guy called Kennedy Wangari, who's quite prominent in the African data science space. And he's, he, he calls data science a team sport. And, and we find that to be really true. It's much, much easier to learn something as complex as data science when you are, have a group to work in. Um, so that was a that was an important aspect for us. Um, so just look a brief look into the future. We really are focusing on how we can uh, get some kind of a self selection process set up. Uh, we are running a woman focused mentorship program, probably starting in May. And the idea there would be that rather than us choosing, you know, us connecting mentors and mentees, we would give the group of mentees access to the information about the group of mentors and let them self-select into their groups. So we're gonna do that as an experiment. And then also uh, in the longer term, we're trying to move towards this idea of platform-based mentorship. Um, and the three major questions that occur to me are, how do we automate this process? How do we motivate people, both mentors and mentees? I think the motivation is more important in the case of mentors. Uh, for cohort one, our motivation for mentors was that we provided cloud computing credits for them and we provided um, uh, data, mobile data to, to support them. 
Um, and, and we hope that they were motivated by being able to put that on their CV. Um, we will be paying a stipend towards our men towards this coming cohort. But when it comes to a platform-based approach, um, we need to think about other motivations and we're looking at gamification of the platform and that kind of thing. And then if it's, if it's being run outside of our control, how do we manage it to ensure uh, positive outcomes for both the mentors and the mentees? So those are just some of the questions that we are thinking about at the moment. So I'll stop there. I'm sure there are some questions and comments, but for now, that's me. Thank you very much.